the Midway neighborhood in St. Paul. Once a bustling manufacturing center, in recent years the area has struggled. Luckily, a new group of business entrepreneurs are seeking to revitalize the neighborhood and restore it to its former glory through... Mini golf? Yes, Can Can Wonderland, an indoor mini golf park, opened up shop in the former American Can Factory building last year. And to them, fun and games are serious business. But could mini golf and pinball really save the neighborhood? I sat down with CEO Jennifer Pennington to learn more. So, Jennifer. Yeah. Your title is CEO and... Firecracker and rain leader. Firecracker and ring leader. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, can we can we get that changed on um, on the title card there? Oh, that's, that's fun. Can I, can I get one too? Just one, like, right, right. Tell me a bit about how this came to be, how it evolved. My husband and I had been involved with different local arts organizations and activities, and then he founded and I helped him start the artist design haunted basement at the soap factory. The soap factory board told us that the only reason they were able to weather the recession was because of income from the artist design haunted basement. So it kind of created this challenge of how could we create an arts organization that might be self-funded once it's up and operating. The mini golf course is designed by entirely local artists, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, three area teachers that saw the call for artists and wrote curriculum using math, physics, and art concepts, and their whole their entire classroom submitted proposals. And two of the mini golf holes were submitted by um, seventh grade boys in their classroom. I know, so fun, like natural disaster. Oh, yeah. Cutting through a tornado and a volcano and earthquake. I mean, that's brilliant. And I got to sit down with some of these mini golf artists, including literal rocket scientist Jason Quick. So, mini golf wasn't always your passion. Like, you did not come from a mini golf background or. I said I was teaching when I was drawing this up. A little while before that, I was working for a NASA contractor down in Alabama, working on 30 foot tall mock ups. For a human factors team. Um, yeah, I saw hidden figures, so I, I know like, how NASA works now. You designed this mountain. Yes, I did. So uh, tell us about your hole. It started out much simpler, and then we realized there were technical challenges, like the ball is just going to hit a surface and fly away, so we needed to contain it. And the next thing you know, it's a Rube Goldberg machine with countless unrepairable instruments for music repair shops. The main structure is donated materials from the Minnesota Opera, so there's really there is support from the Twin Cities community and from lots of volunteers, friends and family. How many years were you in school then? Like Three. I went to school for mechanical engineering and then later on went to design school, to industrial design school. So a couple of middle schoolers did, did the other hole, the hole of the tornado. Point um, taken. So, I mean, it can't be... Can't, can't be, be that, that hard. hard. Yeah. No, no. After chatting with Jason about his wasted potential, I talked with sculpture artist Cecilia Schiller about her mini golf creation. So when did you leave NASA? I'm to, sorry? Uh, so all the holes are inspired by a song. What was your inspirational song? Well, of course, it was the Beach Boys, Catching a Wave. Are we able to play that music, Catching a Wave? Do we have the rights to that? We'll, we'll put it in. We'll put it in. Like the, we'll play the whole song. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. like smile. Yeah. Uh, how hard would you say the hole is? Like, if you're gonna give it like a rating, uh, low to medium. I was watching a, a couple play, and the the wife came through, and she she hit it, and it went right up. And she got a hole in one, and she's like, ah! and then her husband came behind her, and he hit it. And it goes up the ramp, it comes back down. He was like five putts before he got it into the wave, caught the wave, came out, and it bounced off one of the bumpers. By that time, you could see his like male ego was getting a little shattered. So I, I kind of was enjoying that. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's about dismantling toxic masculinity. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, this isn't on tape, though, is it? No, this, can isn't, edit this, this isn't part a, out. No, we'll edit this part out. Okay. At the end of the day, it's like a bait and switch. Like, yeah. you're like, think you're coming for mini golf. Surprise, you're, you're looking at art now. Like, that's... Yeah. Or like there's so much more. Like it's not just a mini golf course. There's so much more happening. And some people come and they might not play mini golf at all. Because they're too busy getting trashed. That's right. There's booze in those slushies. 
And in the crazy cocktails, I got to see firsthand at the bar with Nick Kosovich. It's basically a horchata cocktail. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take three ounces of wild rice horchata. We're gonna combine all the ingredients here. Uh, the next drink uh, ingredient is this uh, Rujero Singani. It's an ounce and a half in this drink as well, so we'll add that to the right. mixture. Uh, the next thing is uh, Mezcal. From there, we are going to add an ingredient that you probably know, uh, water. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, right. so we Favorite. add a little bit of water to that as well. And then uh, we're going to add some bitters as well. So this is a, a blend of three of our bitters. It's called Mahalo. Soy sauce. Yeah. Soy sauce. Is soy, soy sauce. Yeah. Well, Those, not that's not soy sauce well. at all, I promise, okay, yes. It. Uh, we do use soy sauce in drinks sometimes, though. What? And then what we're going to do is we've got all the ingredients there combined together. We're going to take the uh, Bora Bora Tiki Head, what? add some crushed ice, and then we're going to take the ingredients and just pour it over. The next step is the garnish. So cilantro is the garnish for this drink. And then we're going to take some toasted pepitas and just kind of lay them, which basically makes the drink a salad, which is extremely important. All right, so that's it. It's very simple. Here at Can Can, you know, we, we see so many people every week. We're 2,500 people every weekend. Oh, wow. And so for us, we have a very complex uh, uh, cocktail menu, but we want to have the uh, execution be very simple. When this drink is ordered, we literally just kind of pull it out of a, a cold beverage dispenser and pour it over crushed ice. So, what? Yeah. Like that? That thing right there, yeah. After talking shop with the experts behind this economic engine for the arts, it was time for me to experience it firsthand. This is the best day of my life. We have a secret bar. There's a little swing inside right there. No, it's too, it's too good. Can Can Wonderland, more like Can't Can't Wonderland. before I remembered that no matter how artsy the course is, mini golf is still fucking hard. Can Can Wonderland is supporting the arts in the Midway neighborhood by being a museum where you can lose in front of your friends. Hi there. How was it? Can we just get like something normal, just like something on tap? It's yes. Great, it's, great. It's, it's a lot. Yes, I've got something on tap for you. One second. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Anna. Happy birthday to you. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah, no, that works. Perfect. So.